This video will help you answer the questions, what is a sequence, what is an arithmetic sequence, and how do we write a function rule for a sequence. Well, a sequence is just a list of numbers in order that follow a pattern. Let's take a look at this first sequence, 1, 4, 7. If we were to follow the pattern, it looks like each time you add 3 to get the next number. So there's the pattern. Add 3. And if we had to extend this sequence, we just add 3 to 16 and get 19. Add 3, get 22. And add 3 and get 25. In the next sequence, the rule looks like we add 5. 5 to 10, 10 to 15, 15 to 20, 25 to uh, 20 to 25 and extending the sequence is easy we just add 5 to 25 and get 30 then 35 and then 40. Now the third sequence is a little bit different so if we go from these first two you add 0 then you add 1 then you add 1 again then 2, then 3, and then 5. Well, if you look carefully, first of all, you notice immediately that these numbers are not all the same. But if you look carefully, the plus 1, plus 1, 2, 3, 5, well, that's just the same as this one, 1, 2, 3, 5. So it looks like if we were to continue this sequence, the next addition would be 8 and then 13 then well we're not sure so let's continue uh, 13 plus 8 is 21 so that's going to be the next addition here is 21 then 21 plus 13 is 34 and 34 plus 21 is 55 this sequence is known as the Fibonacci sequence this last sequence, you'll notice that, well, maybe you add 2, but maybe not. Maybe if you multiply by 2 here, ah, yes, that seems to work. Multiply each by 2, and then it's easy to extend the sequence by multiplying by 2 to get 64, multiply by 2 to get 128, and then 256. So these are four examples of different sequences. Two of the sequences we looked at before are called arithmetic sequences. And the sequences are arithmetic if there's a common difference. In other words, the difference between successive numbers of the sequence is always the same. In this first sequence, we see that the common difference is 3. It's 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3. So there is 3 is the common difference. In the second sequence, we see that 5 is the common difference. So here, 5 is the common difference because all of these differences are the same. If we look at the two other sequences that we saw before, we'll notice, is, we'll notice that the differences are not common. So in the first sequence, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, the differences are 0, 1, 1, 2, 3. They're not the same differences, so there is not a common difference. In the second sequence, there was a consistent pattern, but the differences are different. So here the differences are 2, 4, 8, 16. This is not an arithmetic sequence. The only arithmetic sequences are the ones where the differences between successive uh, members of the sequence is the same. The difference has to be the same. The numbers in a sequence 1, 4, 7 are called terms. 
And when we have a sequence, we number the terms. And usually we represent the number of the turn with the variable n. So 1 is the first term, term number 1. 4 is the second term, 3rd, 4th, 5th, and 6th. Now we might ask, in a sequence like this, what is, let's say, the 100th term? What is the 500th term? Now we could figure it out by hand just by calculating each term up to the 100th or the 500th, but if we could write a function that takes as its input the term number and gives out the value of the term, that would be a lot more convenient. So that's what we're looking at. So let's look at the structure of this and we'll put in the common differences. And then we'll look at we'll build a table and we'll look at the relationship between the term number and the term. Here's our table. Now term number one is just one. Term number two is one plus three. Term number three, seven, is one plus two threes. One plus 2 times 3. The fourth term, 10, is 1 plus 3 times 3. And the fifth term is 1 plus 4 times 3. And the sixth term is 1 plus 5 times 3. Now notice that the numbers that multiply 3, and actually to be consistent, we could change this one to 1 plus 1 times 3, and now we can see the pattern clearly. So this is 1 less than n, 2 is 1 less than 3, 3 is 1 less than 4, and so on. So if we want the nth term, that is going to be 1 plus n minus 1 times 3. See that again, 1 plus n minus 1 times 3. So our formula or our function for this, this sequence is, is written as follows. The nth term of the sequence is equal to 1 plus n minus 1 times 3. And we can also write that 1 plus 3 times n minus 1. So this is our way of calculating the nth term. If we want to know the hundredth term, we can calculate this as 1 plus 3 times 100 minus 1. That's 1 plus 3 times 99, which is 298. So the 100th term of the sequence is 298. As a preview to what's coming up in later chapters, I'd like to show you what happens with the following sequence. Now, let's say that we had a function rule that looked like this, 4n plus 1 equals t, and I asked you to make a table. Well, we can start with 1, 1, 4 times 1 is 4, plus 1 is 5, and so on. We can make this table. But let's turn this into a sequence. We'll take a look at the t's and we'll turn that into a sequence 5, 9, 13, 17, 21, 25. The common difference is 4. And the rule that we had was that s sub n, the nth term, is equal to the first term plus n minus 1 times the common difference, 
d. Applied to this, the nth term is, well, the first term is 5 plus n minus 1 times the common difference 4. We can rewrite this as we did before. 5 plus uh, 4 times n minus 1. And now let's do a little simplifying. This is going to be 5 plus 4n minus 4 and then 5 minus 4 is 1 so this is 1 plus 4n that's s n. Now notice that this is exactly the same as that 4n plus 1 and 4n plus 1. So arithmetic sequences are related to linear equations and we're going to learn more about that in our next chapter.